Let's get to my guest who is standing by on the Miller Lite Jersey Central Newsmaker Hotline. He's going to be in concert at the Bickford Theater at the Morris Museum in Morristown. Coming up uh, this coming Sunday afternoon, and it's a rare New Jersey appearance for a guy from Jersey. It's going to be a terrific uh, afternoon of music. Uh, Let's welcome in concert pianist uh, Christopher Johnson, who is with me here uh, on WCTC. Christopher, good morning. It's Burt Barron. How are you? Hi, Bert. Uh, doing great. It's great to be here and meet you over the phone. Thanks Some, for having me. Something very special uh, about being able to come home, uh, Christopher, and playing in front of the home crowd and and uh, your experiences and your skill and just kind of coming home and celebrating all you've been able to achieve. There's something special about being able to perform in, in your home state, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it's wonderful. Uh, I'm anticipating there will be some familiar faces and some new faces, so I think I'll be among friends, and the program itself is going to be very exciting, a blockbuster. Not what one might expect uh, going to a classical music concert, not that boring music or music that's uh, hard to understand. This is a little different. That's what I like. You know, different and exciting is uh, is what music is, at least that is what it is uh, from my perspective. Um, talk about some influences for yourself, uh, Christopher. Who, who, who played the piano that you said, wow, that's what I want to do someday? Well, going in historical order, I'd say Beethoven, Chopin, Rachmaninoff, and then uh, Horowitz, Rubinstein, and then uh, my teachers, uh, Byron Janet and Abby Simon, were big influences. But uh, this program will be really unique. The first half will comprise exclusively the works of Frederick Chopin. And for over 150 years, he has always been the most beloved composer for the solo piano. And I'm actually going to reveal the secret to this great mystery right at the beginning of the recital, Mm. but I'll reveal it right now. Um, And that's because his inspiration comes not from the symphony orchestra, not the string quartet, not even from other piano pieces, but rather the inspiration comes from the most beautiful and personal instrument of all, and that is the human voice, but the piano is His voice and his innovations were just extraordinary. So the program will start with a blockbuster, scarcely number two, large scale, about 10 minutes in length. The experience of a lifetime, I'd like to think, uh, with uh, long vocal lines that seem to soar like an eagle, covering the ends of the earth, bringing us to a very heroic note and lots of brilliant piano writing. So I'd like to think that's good news. It gets it off to a good start, and that's just the beginning. I love it. Yeah. Uh, for people that are virtuosos like yourself, Christopher, uh, do you still have to work at it? Do you still block off some time, uh, whether every day or every week, just to kind of play and just, just kind of do your thing and, and kind of stay in the moment? Because uh, when I look at people that have mastered their instrument much like you have, uh, you still have to kind of work at it, right? It still has to be your your passion from sun up to sundown to be able to perform at the level that you do, right? Absolutely. You hit the nail on the head. I do about three hours a day, and that's when my teaching schedule is busy. And I teach six days a week during the academic year and still manage about three hours a day of practice before I go out to teach. And then in the summer, I have more concerts in the summer. I don't teach at all. Oh, it's about four or five hours a day on average. And then I give myself some vacations, too. So, uh, yeah, you never stop learning. If you ask me, how do I see myself at 85 years of age? Well, Still learning. Yeah. Never stop learning. Let that be a lesson for anyone who was kind of, uh, you know, taking voice or dance or music lessons. Uh, I'm speaking to a gentleman now who has played uh, all over the world in Europe and and South America, and he's been everywhere. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, And here's a guy that still practices, you know, and and still puts the work in to to continue to uh, strive to still be the best he can be. So let that be a lesson for anybody who is uh, is taking up uh, any sort of musical instrument. My guest is Christopher Johnson this morning, uh, this coming Sunday, 3 p.m. A great, great performance at the Bickford Theater at the Morris Museum in Morristown. Uh, You can call for tickets uh, 973-971-3706 or purchase tickets online, which makes it nice and easy morrismuseum.org. And you mentioned about uh, teaching uh, piano, uh, Christopher. What, what sort of advice, what sort of inspiration do you give uh, to a young person who is learning to play the piano from you? What do you do and what do you say to them to keep them motivated and, and keep them uh, locked into learning to, to, to play this instrument? It's a great question. People ask me, what's my method? Well, I have 25 different methods because there are no two students alike. So what I do is a discovery process. 
and I find out what does the student like the most? What's her favorite piece ever? And they'll probably say, if it's a girl, Adele, or Coldplay, Maroon 5, some pop music. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to think that there isn't anything you can't play on piano. Because we go higher than the piccolo, lower than the double bass, all the notes in the middle. We can play them all. So that's what we do. We arrange it to their level, a little harder to challenge them. And then they're loving what they do. And, of course, they're going to be better at it if they love what they do. And uh, it starts to snowball and uh, take off. So that's really my method, and I encourage other teachers to do that. It's not that hard. In other words, we don't need the boring method books. Just what do they like? What makes them tick? And let's go with that. This is what I love about music, and particularly the piano, Christopher. If you look back through all of history and all of time and all the great works that have been there, we've only scratched the surface of what the potential is uh, for what the human spirit and, and what art we can create uh, with music and with the piano and you're right there on the front of this so anyone who is going to see you on sunday is in for a real treat so i urge people to get tickets at morrismuseum.org or again the number 973-971-3706 uh and uh, there's a, there'll be a piece uh, in the second part after the intermission that's going to be a new jersey premiere of a piece you'll be playing for the first time uh, in our in in new jersey did you want to talk about that a bit Sure, absolutely, and I just want to mention this as well, in case we run out of time in public, in case they're listening, I want to extend my very, very heartfelt thanks to Don and Linda Smith. Um, Linda, I think, is in charge or has a big part in hiring the artist, and Mm -hmm. Don is just a publicity master, and I really sense that he enjoys and loves what he does. It just comes through, and I just want to thank both of them so much for uh, making this happen. Uh, so about Rhapsody on America the Beautiful, yeah, it's something truly my own. And I was just listening last night on a WQXR in New York City, Reflections from the Keyboard, David Duvall. I was an assistant at Juilliard. He was talking about the composer Franz Liszt and how he would write paraphrases based on pre-existing songs of Schubert, Schumann, and last night was Verity. Okay. So I wanted to come up with something truly unique and unabashedly American. And so here we have it, about four minutes in length. It actually starts from the vantage point of the American bald eagle just gently gliding by the wonders of nature that are described in the song. And when the eagle has landed, the song begins quietly but with confidence. And then the build-up, the way it grows into something that is very powerful, majestic, and sweeping. So there it be, about four minutes in length. Yes, the New Jersey premiere, and it's just a beautiful song. Well, we look forward to that. Uh, Social media, Christopher, do you do uh, Facebook and Twitter and websites and all the social media stuff, too? Definitely. My website, www.ChristopherJohnsonPianist.com. Okay, so anything you want to know about me uh, is on there. Uh, Facebook, yep, you can see that as a page. But uh, the website has just been updated, actually, so... There's a lot of stuff on there. Terrific. News, I'll be sh- videos, all that. Great. I will be sure to take a look at that. And in fact, uh, Christopher, I'm so inspired uh, just by speaking to you this morning. When I do my contest a little bit later on, I will include a pair of tickets uh, to come and see you on, on Sunday because I, I would I want someone to enjoy this great music you're going to be doing on Sunday. So uh, I will be giving away three prizes a little bit later on this morning, and uh, it will include a pair of tickets to see Christopher Johnson uh, in his concert in Morristown this Sunday. How does that sound? Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. It's really my pleasure. It. All my pleasure, Christopher. Great to speak with you this morning. Continued success, my friend. All right? Thank you so much.